Okay, so in my last video, I was talking about should you buy a 3080 or 3090 right now, sit there clicking that refresh button, trying to grab one as soon as it gets in the stock, or would it be better to wait for the uh, uh, AMD reveal of Big Navi? And you can check out that video if you'd like. Um, but one thing I brought up in that is speaking of whether or not Big Navi could be worth it, um, I, I thought about the usefulness of ray tracing. And uh, I came down on the side of ray tracing is a cool feature. And if you're out, out, out to do the best sightseeing in video games, it can, it can have some cool visuals in games that support it, but that you come, it comes at a huge frame per second loss. And for me personally, a lot of times I'd rather have the uh, 100 plus frames per second without the ray tracing features rather than struggling to maintain 60 frames per second with the ray tracing features. So in other words, I feel like that, that while ray tracing is cool, it's not the absolute killer, uh, killer feature um, that NVIDIA might like it to be when it comes to selling the, the GPUs. Um, so I felt like um, AMD maybe lacking the competitiveness in the ray tracing regard um, isn't gonna be that big of a deal for a lot of people. Although if you disagree with that and you're totally into ray tracing, I respect that opinion and that's fine. But what I wanna talk about right now that I didn't get into in that discussion is what I really think could be AMD's biggest drawback when compared with NVIDIA, which isn't just being able to compete at the highest end of performance, and it isn't being able to compete at the highest end of ray tracing. It's NVIDIA's DLSS technology. And let's talk about YouTube stuff. I'm just starting this channel out, and uh, to become more visible on YouTube. It's gonna help me out a lot if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I can't force you to do anything, but that would help me out a lot, becoming more visible in the YouTube search algorithm. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about DLSS. Why do I think DLSS is such a big deal? I think DLSS is, at least for me, the biggest difference between AMD and NVIDIA uh, that I'm most concerned about. And that's what I'd most like to see as a big surprise in AMD's reveal of Big Navi. So the, the biggest big deal that Big Navi could bring to the table for me would be telling me how they can compete with DLSS. Because right now, I'm not convinced they can. Okay, so let's, let's back it up a step and talk about what is DLSS and why do I think it's such a big deal? DLSS is NVIDIA's um, AI-enhanced upscaling technology that allows a game to run uh, its render at a much lower resolution than, uh, than the native resolution and then output the native resolution um, and almost look identical when, when it's functioning well. <laughs> it could look almost identical to the native resolution. Here's what I mean. You could run a game like Control uh, at an internal rendering of 1440p or even 1080p allowing you to run at a pretty decent frame rate, but then output a resolution of 4K. And NVIDIA's AI-enhanced um, upscaling technology is able to quickly uh, predict what the 4K image would look like based on the lower re resolution rendering that the, it's actually having to process. And in games that implement it well, like Control, it can be almost impossible to the naked eye when you're actually just playing the game to spot the difference. I initially wasn't really on board with DLSS. When it first came out with DL DLSS 1.0, um, I wasn't impressed. I tried it out in some games and it looked like a blurry mess. I wasn't impressed, turned it off, didn't give it a second of thought for quite a while. When I gave it a second thought uh, was actually when I started playing Control. Now I was a little late to the party with uh, with Control because it was um, an Epic Game Store ex timed exclusive for a while. But when it finally came to Steam, um, I gave it a shot. 
uh, I thought, hey, uh, I heard this game has some cool ray tracing stuff, so I turn on all the ray tracing buttons, um, and then my performance was awful. Uh, so then I, I looked into, okay, it has DLSS, and, and I found out that this was actually the 2.0 implementation of DLSS. So the 2.0 version, compared to the 1.0 version that I had initially tried out and hated, um, was just absolutely night and day, mind-blowingly better. Um, with the 2.0 in, in, in control, when I'm actually playing the game, I really can't tell uh, visually almost any distinguishable difference. When, and, and look, like, I'm not talking like, could I take screenshots and slowly pick out differences? Yes. But when I'm actually just playing the game for enjoyment and not analyzing it for the purposes of a review, if I'm just playing the game, I can run at like 720p. Uh, now I, I play in ultra wide, so for me, 720p ultra wide is, is different than just normal 720p. But I could play at the the internal rendering of 720p and output at 1440p. Mine's 3440 by 1440 because I'm in the in the ultra wide category. I can output at that, and honestly, the only real difference I notice is that my frame rate is dramatically better. So when it's functioning properly. DLSS is like actual black magic that I don't even understand how it's capable of doing that. It's incredibly effective and incredibly impressive. For example, um, this is a big deal for NVIDIA. When they're marketing cards like the uh, 3090 as an 8K capable uh, GPU, they're not really saying that a lot of games are going to run at the highest settings at native at a native 8K resolution. They're talking about using DLSS 2.0 to render the game at a lower resolution, like 4K or maybe even 1080p or 1440p, if you want their, their super <laughs> DLSS uh, uh, performance mode. Um, so they'll render the game at a, at a much more reasonable uh, resolution and then output it to 8K. Um, and it looks a lot like native 8K. Native 8K. Um, it, it's very impressive when it functions. Now, games have to be programmed to take advantage of that. And by the way, in case you guys are going to jump onto me, no, the 3090 really does run natively at 8K. It can in some games. Um, I believe Doom Eternal can do it at almost, um, almost max settings, fairly high settings. It can actually run at native 8K. Uh, and I'm sure some older games could do it too. So I'm not saying that the 3090 can't run native 8K. But I'm saying that 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 marketing claim that it could actually just do that on a on a uh, on a large scale with many games um, is really more based on you're really rendering it at a lower resolution and outputting it at 8K via DLSS, and honestly, doesn't look <laughs> doesn't look bad at all when 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 DLSS 2.0 functions properly. Like I said, I wasn't impressed by the 1.0 version of it, but 2.0 really blew me away, at least when I was playing Control. So now let's get back to why is this a problem for AMD and why I'm hoping, like, like I really want AMD to blow me away with their big Navi reveal by telling me how they compete with DLSS 2.0. So why would they have trouble competing with that? Well, to be honest, it's because Nvidia is doing this with artificial intelligence. They're doing this with AI and Nvidia has become a leader in AI technology lately. So Nvidia doesn't just make graphics processors; they 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 have their their hands in a lot of other uh, a other uh, hands in a lot of other pots. Is, is that is that a thing? Is that is that the is that the term I'm looking for? I don't know. Fingers in other pots. The point is, they make things besides graphics processors, and one of those things that they do a really good job with is artificial intelligence. And their GPUs, their RTX cards have. Um, specific processors that are dedicated to AI. And that's where they're running this DLSS 2.0 black magic. Um, it's not running on the shader cores. It's not running on the part of the GPU that is processing the game. Whereas if you tried to run this kind of technology on a graphics card that didn't have those AI processing specific cores, you could run technology like this, but you would have to run it on part of the GPU that would normally be dedicated to helping run the game itself. 
so it's not going to have the same kind of black magic levels. I keep saying black magic. Sorry, guys. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't have that same kind of um, effect because running that AI processing is not taking anything away from your actual GPU rendering. So um, it's, it's incredibly effective that way and NVIDIA has done a really nice job with it. AMD, to my knowledge at least, doesn't have anywhere near that kind of AI technology from either the software standpoint or the hardware standpoint in their GPUs. Um, I To double check that I wasn't under the wrong impression, I spent about 20 minutes um, earlier today uh, Googling like, can AMD compete with DLSS? What is AMD's uh, answer to DLSS? I found articles and, and, and opinion pieces talking about direct ML, which is a direct machine learning upscaling technology very similar to DLSS uh, that should be compatible with um, with uh, with AMD's RDNA 2 stuff, and I believe it's being used on Xbox games and things like that. And we know Xboxes are running on uh, AMD technology, right? Um, but again, the big difference here is that NVIDIA has parts of their GPU dedicated directly to AI functions, whereas to my knowledge so far, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I would love to find out if 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 there's info out here that I just couldn't find. Um, but to my knowledge, a AMD does not have, at least anywhere near to that extent, um, that kind of AI processing technology built separately into their GPU. Um, if they, uh, I, to my knowledge, they would be running uh, things like that on their actual shader cores. Um, and so uh, odds are it wouldn't be anywhere near as impressive of a performance gain for them. That brings me again to what I want to see from the big Navi reveal. Sure, there's other things I'd like to see. I would love to find out that they didn't reveal, they didn't tease their, their biggest of the big Navis. I would love to hear that they um, actually can't just almost compete with the 3080. I'd love to hear that they could blow it out of the water. Now, I'm not convinced that that's the case, but I would love to see that happen. Um, I'd also think it would be cool if they show us that they can, they actually have amazing ray tracing technology. Uh, but again, I'm actually not that concerned if they have ray tracing tech that's on par with NVIDIA's. But where I am concerned is whether or not they have anything that can compete with DLSS. Because if an NVIDIA card could run a game at 1080p internally and output it at 4K and have it look almost indistinguishable from native 4K, so you're running 4K graphics at 1080p performance levels, then sorry, AMD, you're not gonna get my money on this one. And I would love to support them. If they can almost reach 3080 levels of performance. Um, so again, even if there's, there's no big reveal of something better than 3080, if they just have that, you know, almost as good as a 3080, better than a 2080 Ti, TI levels of performance. If they brought that at a good price point, I'd be on board if it wasn't for this reservation about DLSS. I think that DLSS and this type of artificial intelligence enhancing the graphics, I think that's the future of getting mind-blowingly better looking games that actually run extremely smoothly at high frame rates. If you have a different opinion, or especially if you have news that you think I've missed, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd, I'd love to discuss this. Thoughts on DLSS? Thoughts on can AMD compete? Anyway, uh, my lunch break's just about over here. I gotta get back to teaching. <laughs> I hope you guys have an excellent day.